Hello, people on the internet. As you can see, I'm in my garage at my house. I'm going to be tuning the MR2 today, finally. If you're new to the channel and you're not quite caught up on what is going on, I just recently rewired the entire car and I put a standalone ECU in there. There's a link up above that will get you caught up. There's nowhere in Tucson that I could really take the MR2 to get it tuned. So it's gonna be getting tuned by ATS Racing. They're in Texas and they're like one of the leading shops for tuning MR2s in this country, as well as old school Ferraris, which is kind of cool, and Lotuses. I'm gonna take off the T-tops just to make it easier for, I'm taking off the T-tops because I, I want to take off the T-tops. Is it dead? Oh, it's dead. It was a tarantula. I just gotta hook up the laptop in the trunk. I wasn't able to finish putting all my interior plastics back together because I had to order some pop clips. So those are just gonna have to chill until I get this thing to the shop again. This is gonna be weird. I'm gonna have to. Downside of having your ECU in the trunk on a mid-engine car. Where's this place? To visit rich in Renaissance architecture, not clear. Oh, this is Venice. I have been here. <sighs> it's toasty sitting inside that car. Oh, okay, and there's a tuner. I don't care if I sent a, a layout file or not. I don't think so. We, you sent a base map. So, um, let me get back to this. I may give it a little bit more here, but we'll see. I want to see how it responds first. Um, and really, I don't think we'll do anything with timing today other than this, just to get it to a safe level. Okay. I have it on speakerphone and I have to hold it up to my ear. <laughs> it's because I'm in my garage and it's a small garage. I had to put the car on the quick jack because the cam lambda blah 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 was not working because I was one wire off on the plug back here. So I just had to move the wire over and now it's working. I gotta get this thing to my shop. I have no tools here. I need a lift. My cooling fans, only one of them works. They're just junk cooling fans, so that's the issue. So it runs hot. My AC isn't working. The signal to turn on the clutch fan isn't working. Factory temp gauge doesn't work. It works, but when the engine's running, it doesn't. And my tack isn't working. It sweeps, but when the engine's running, it doesn't work. I just gotta keep an eye on my ECTs. They're running normal right now, but if I have to stop for traffic, they start getting too hot. I just drove all the way here with no AC. It's 99 degrees outside, and I had the defrost on so a car wouldn't overheat. This thing runs like garbage right now. I can't build boost with it and it hiccups and hesitates just trying to get up to speed. It has zero power. Charlie followed me here in his big semi truck and he was out accelerating me. He was like getting up behind me and I couldn't get out of the way because this thing is just like it's running so terrible. But at least it's here at my shop now so I can get on the lift. This is likely because I don't have the best cooling fans on here in the world. So about three years ago, I, uh, I upgraded the cooling fans in here and put a new radiator because the other radiator was dinked up. And um, now the cooling fans, only one's working, the condenser fans not. Let's not focus on the why the fan wasn't working more so let's just focus on the fans now going to be working in my defense i had this radiator apart a couple times when i was getting the ac working because the condenser lines were leaking and uh stuff got tugged on and possibly yep okay okay one soldered this is a lot quicker than getting my heat gun out of my toolbox and using that to shrink these. Oh yeah. Oh, ready? Yeah. Yeah, my tack, my tachometer sweeps. 
So it's tied into digital input too, so that way it the AC uh, when it comes online it ties in digital input too because digital input two will then uh, adjust the idle accordingly. Uh, IE116 is coming from the AC amplifier, so that's down in the driver's foot well is IE116. Is it working? Yeah, I, I got power here at this, at this plug. So We gotta check the underside of the box to make sure it's getting through. So what's happening is uh, that if that's all good, that side of the system, then the signal to the compressor clutch is just not doing its job. You know what I bet you happened? I had to uh, add those Deutsch connectors late on, and I bet you were losing the signal just right behind that heat shield. Uh, since Charlie had a signal in EB1, that means everything under EB1, the lower side of the fuse box that goes up to the front of the car to IE116 is where the signal for the AC comes from the AC amplifier. Yeah, I actually remember that. It uh. <laughs> It then means everything down there is good. So the next place I'm gonna check is the Deutsch connector I added that goes up over to the actual clutch itself. So down here, there should be a two wire, yep, right here, two wire Deutsch connector. This guy right here is the next place we need to test. Okay. You're gonna check the dangling one. Okay, you ready? Yep. Yep. Good? You had signal there? Yeah. So that means it's just in the final wire that goes up over the heat shield. So the funny thing about these Deutsch connectors is you actually have to use your fingers and squeeze them together or else they will not connect. It's a wild concept. I feel like a complete and utter moron right now. Not like the cow kind. The whole reason why the cooling fans didn't work shitty connector. The whole reason why I didn't have air conditioning or a working tachometer because I didn't squeeze the Deutsch connector together all the way. So I drove here like an idiot with no AC sweating my butt off for no reason. I'm dumb. This thing's ready for the tuner to continue tuning the car. Get the tuning on my handy dandy workbench. Pickup trucks. Handy. This right here should be my newest map. Yes, download to ECU. It's got a text message. It's probably the tuner. No, it's Faye. Hello. It definitely seems to idle a lot better. It's a little rough on startup, but it idles nicely now and all the cooling fans are working. Time to take this thing for a drive and uh, see how it does. He said for this trip to give it a little bit more RPM and uh, also to build just a tiny bit of boost with it and see how it does. So. Nope. It will not build boost at all. Well, I built a pound and a half. I built a little bit of boost. And now my tack isn't working. Oh yeah, that's right. I gotta reconfigure the tack. My AC isn't working again. When I loaded the new map, it doesn't have the changes to the tack that I made because the tachometer uh, adapter that I bought also sends a signal up to the AC amplifier to show the AC amplifier that the engine's running. So that's why my AC wasn't working before. Man, it is not happy. Temperatures are still good though. Even my air intake temps are down a lot from what they were yesterday. I want to save log file. Ugh. This thing is about to die. Based on the recommendations of, I have a hair stuck to my camera lens. Based on the recommendations of Scott at ATS, he said I should verify my mechanical timing one more time because it shouldn't be hesitating so much down low. It's literally like you floor it and it's just like Mwah. Just like that, that face too. Right now the trigger offset for the crank is set to 343 degrees with the reference timing at 15 degrees. And I need a timing gun. So many cords. Timing gun, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna sit inside the car and be outside the car at the same time? Ooh, hot. 
I don't want to drop my little spacer down inside the engine that's underneath the uh, coil pack, so I'm gonna use some tape, stick it to the spacer. That way I can pull it out easier. Ow, that's fucking hot. Ah? Ah? Just like that. That's how you don't lose a spacer. Magic. And I didn't even waste any tape. So I can just roll that back up. Everything is so hot in there. Okay. So that's good. It's a, it's a tad sketchy, but it'll get the job done. Don't worry about it. It's not like Charlie was in the middle of doing something or anything and I asked him if he'd come over here and help me. It's just, it takes two people to do this. Yeah, you you can't hold the timing light back here and verify timing. On the while, laptop. While simultaneously working the laptop and turning the ignition key, like it's not. Markers are in that uh, side drawer. Yeah, because that was descriptive. And I will hook up power. All right, start it up again. So the issue was, is a little bit of a communication error when setting the reference timing. In the laptop, it says 15 degrees for your reference timing. So with the timing light, we were setting it so we were seeing zero on the actual markings. When you look at this, it's a little bit confusing unless you know the system. And neither of us do, neither of us are tuners, so. Yeah, so it was essentially 17 degrees off. That's why it runs yeah, like Yeah, that's crap. why it runs like poop. All right, shut it off. The other direction, I think. Yeah, we're gonna go the other direction. Problem solved. Timing correct. Scott is logged into it right now, and he's looking over the tune before I take this thing for a drive. Dude, drivability, hands down better. Build a little bit of boost. That was like five pounds. IATs are at 66. Engine coolant temp 93 degrees Celsius. So it's running nice now. It's pretty much impossible to read this because this laptop screen is a turd and it's really sunny out. I'm trying my best, but that was the data log I just pulled. And now I just gotta send it off to the tuner. My uh, door button right here is on the fritz so it kind of sounds like one of those geiger counters for radiation i guess that means i'm in a radiation zone i do a slight pull that was eight psi i just drank a smoothie and i have slime in my throat Good morning, internet people. I'm gonna be continuing on the MR2 today. The goal for today is to hopefully get this, that's windy, get this 91 octane map completely knocked out. <laughs> for those of you that live in other countries, I know you're thinking 91 octane, that's really low. And yes, welcome to Arizona. We have terrible gas here, but also United States octane rating, this right here, RC3 PBO, is not the same as other countries octane rating just to clarify that that uh, ron equivalent of 91 octane i think is like 94 i'll put it on the screen but yeah also going to be doing a e85 tune on here so it'll be flex fuel compatible and then a blend table but that is probably going to require a dyno to do that portion why is this so confusing why ouch this car is in dire need of a detail. So is this thing capable of essentially like tuning itself or? Somewhat, that's what this does um, based on the data you record. But then you've got to go back and verify it. Can it do it real time on the fly or does it require? Yeah, they can do it real time on the flies with the quick tune feature. And oh. that, again, that that's with the load holding dyno. Oh, okay, that's crazy. So the highest I ever got it up to was 5,500. Is that why that's orange? This portion here? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what it got data for anyway. You may have gone a little bit higher. Oh, okay. We can, we can check the actual. Like the tr to try to calculate a cell that didn't get data, do you just use the, the cells that are around that cell that you have the 
data from and then you kind of calculate just using math what that should be since it didn't capture it or it didn't capture it for the mixture map but it did capture it here in the log where we're looking at so oh it, it's lambda was 0.878 and the target was 0.83 okay <laughs> it just completely cut out on me and we probably over Yep, it, <laughs> it's over boosting. Okay, that's fine. That's enough. Let me, um, let me take a look at the data we got. It definitely felt a lot. I didn't feel any hesitation other than that brief moment right when I tipped my foot into the throttle. I felt a slight hesitation and then it was like nothing after that. Okay. Let's see about what that point was. I just pulled over on the side of the road after doing the first couple pulls and he's going through the map right now in the log to see, make any changes, and then I'm gonna go do a couple more pulls. Feels good. And there's fuel cut. That okay. felt good. It is going red to me, which is good. Yeah, I saw 11.7, 11.4, 11.7. That, that's probably where about the peak torque is gonna be, so that's our most likely place to see knock. Okay. I think uh, there, we may end up at you know, 13, 14 there. Probably more early and more later. It was only right to end this video out in the garage since it started in the garage. The street tune is complete. The car runs good. It's tuned on 13 and a half PSI. It's about as safe as we can do a 91 octane until we get it on the dyno and put it on a load cell. And then do the E85 tune, which should hopefully help with the heat issue because the IATs still get pretty bad. I ordered a phenolic spacer for to delete the Tevis as much as I didn't want to. I gotta do something to help with the heat soak. It's just part of living in Arizona. But um, yeah, thanks a lot to Aaron and Scott at ATS Racing for getting the street tune knocked out on this thing. And soon to come will be the dyno tune. I already bought two, I think they're like five gallon jugs of E98. So that will be happening. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys soon with another video on this guy. Start working on them tomorrow. It's gonna be exciting. Trust me. You will be excited for this one. I hope. If you like butts. <laughs> Bye.